This morning on today's checklist, we are answering some common questions about prescription drugs. So when you need one, brand name versus generic, and so much more. So here to break it down for us is NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Dr. Azar, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you all. This first one seems like a big deal, an FDA-approved drug for those with food allergies. Yeah, so this was this was uh, an FDA approval that just came in at the end of last week. This is repurposing an older drug that's been used for asthma and other allergic conditions. It's called Zolair. The way that it works is by sort of blunting your body's immune reaction that it normally would, would be triggered by, by an allergy. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing about this is for, for those of us who either live with food allergies or have children who live with food allergies is to remember that this is not eliminating your allergy. Rather, it's blunting your body's ability to react and, mm -hmm. and, and have an allergic reaction to Do a you particular take it before food. Something so you're after. basically going to be taking it like it's an injection that you oh, would wow. take every oh, two wow. to four weeks maybe indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, it's again, it's not used to treat an anaphylactic reaction. Some people did not have any blunting of their of their mm -hmm. allergic response, so it doesn't eliminate the allergy. But I think for people who live with food allergies and if they're taking this medicine Zolaire, if they accidentally or unintentionally come into mm -hmm. contact with something they're allergic to, they're much, much less likely to have a severe reaction, which I think just like liberates people, yeah. you know, as, as they go about their lives living with food allergies and always carrying that EpiPen with them, which right. they still need to have. But anyway, the likelihood of having a severe reaction is much lower. Mm -hmm. Really good news. Absolutely. One of the things that comes up, Dr. Azar, is this idea of brand name versus yes. generic. Where do we go? What's the deal? What's the breakdown? So I, I think like, you know, brands versus generics, uh, you know, the, the big sort of message here is that they're probably more the same than they are different. And that's because the FDA requires that brands and generics are what is called bioequivalent, which means the active ingredient has to be chemically exactly the same, which should mean that they are have the same activity, they have the same safety, they have, have the same purity and all of those things, but there are some differences. For example, the active ingredient, as we said, is gonna be the same between both. The, there's always going to be a higher cost with brands until they become off patent than the generic, and then when there's more competition in the market, that's gonna drive the cost down even more. All of the inactive ingredients in a brand they're tested and approved by the FDA, not necessarily the generic. They may wow. contain little amounts, which is allowable, of something different. And I always point this out because some people say, I'm having a different reaction to this medication. I go, ask your pharmacist. They may have given you a different generic of a medicine that you're normally taking. Yeah, you can have a different, it could not harmful, but it can. you can have a different reaction to it. Huh. Um, the appearance is, is standard with the brand name. It's always gonna look the same. Generic has to look different. Mm. You cannot confuse the two. And the dosage, of course, has to be the same between both. So when would your doctor provide right. one versus the other? Right. So basically, it's availability of the drug. There are not all brands have a generic form. So there might be a medicine for a condition. Only a brand name uh, is allowable or is approved. Your doctor's going to have to recommend that one. The doctor will make that recommendation. And also for specific indications, there are certain medicines that have such a what we call a narrow therapeutic index. There are just not are a lot of medicines that do what that drug does. Mm -hmm. They may make you take the brand. But we love when people want to go generic. It costs less. Mm -hmm. About like two thirds or more of the medications in this country are actually generic, which saves us a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. And insurance is more likely to cover generic, of right. course, because it's, it's cheaper, cheaper for them right, too. Of course. You bet. What exactly is off-label? Right, so we've talked about this a lot because of off-label use of something like Ozempic and those kinds of medications. So basically, you're taking an FDA-approved drug, but you're using it for an unapproved use. Kind of like when people were using Ozempic for weight loss when it was approved only for type 2 diabetes. So this is important. If you're using a drug off-label, you have to understand that the safety and efficacy of that purpose was not reviewed by the FDA. But it may be prescribed if other options are not available. It's common and it's legal, and I do it all the time. <laughs> Insurance coverage, however, they may not approve it. Insurance companies like to say, if it's not for the approved reason, oh. we're not going to cover it. But we use this. Rheumatology is one example. It's, there's a lot of other examples where, lo and behold, this drug works really well for X, Y, and Z, even though it's approved for A. You can do it safely. It's the doctor's discretion, mm. but you just have to understand it doesn't go through that vigorous FDA approval process. You explained so much. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome. I, I feel like I needed a lot of those questions answered, so I really appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you so much. much. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.